So I want to walk you through a skull identification exercise. So if we, are, we were in class, you would be given a um, skull and um, a dichotomous key similar to um, the dichotomous key that is um, that is listed in your actually it'd be the same dichotomous key that's in your that's in your handout. Um, and what we do with dichotomous keys is we figure out what something is. Um, so this particular animal, we don't know what it is, we found this skull, um, there's a top part and a bottom part. Let's go figure out how what this is, right? And that's what dichotomous keys are for. They, they help you um, look at characteristics um, and uh, they give you a, um, a pair of choices. And then you just go the one choice or the other, and then depending on it, it takes you it takes you to the to the solution at the end. Um, so the first question on this particular key is one. So the the the, the keys are usually uh, the, the questions are usually framed as couplets. Which you have two choices that are mutually exclusive, um, and so it's either one or the other. So here you've got a large brain case, smooth rounded muzzle reduced to give an almost flat face. And then the second option is skull distinctly different from above. And depending on which one you choose, you then go to the next number uh, or you know, whatever number is given. Um, usually the hardest part with, um, with these keys is trying to figure out what this actually means. Like, you know, large brain case, smooth rounded muzzle. What does that look like? Well, what that looks like is this. So this would be something with a large brain case, a smooth rounded muzzle, uh, as, as in not pointy, right? Smooth rounded muzzle, given almost flat face. That would be actually a human. And if this were a human, then you would be done right here because it's the only one that we have that's like that. Well, this one clearly doesn't look like that, right? So a skull distinctly different from above. So we go to two. Your next couplet is incisors absent from the upper jaw or incisors present in the upper jaw. First thing you have to know to answer this question is what is an incisor? So an incisor, those are the teeth in the front. Um, and if they're present, you go to three. If they're absent, you're done. Now, who doesn't have incisors in the upper jaw? Well, here's an animal that doesn't have incisors in the upper jaw. Look, they're missing right here. So, but our little animal has incisors present in the upper jaw, so we're going to three. Canines present without pronounced diastema between incisors and cheek teeth, go to 12. Canines absent pronounced diastema between incisors and, and cheek teeth. Well, this one clearly has canines, right? So canines are present here. Um, the one that they're talking about, if there were canines absent, look here. This is a big, this is the gap with the diastema, and this animal does not have any canines. It just has the front teeth right here, right? So this one is canines present without pronounced diastema between incisors and cheek teeth, and we're going to 12. 12. First upper incisor greatly enlarged relative to adjacent incisors. Or 12B, first upper incisor not noticeably enlarged relative to adjacent incisors, go to 13. Now, this does not look like the first upper incisor is notably enlarged, right? Um, if it were, it would look like something like this. This would be a first upper incisor that's uh, noticeably enlarged, but this is clearly not what we've got here. So our first upper incisor is not noticeably enlarged compared to the adjacent incisor, so we're going to 13. Rostrum has U-shaped indentation when, when viewed from above. One to two upper incisors per jaw, small skull, never greater than 30 millimeters in length. Also, one of the things you're gonna have to, have to know at this point in time, how much is 30 millimeter in length? Um, when you look at a ruler, the little indentations, the tiny little marks on the centimeter line, those are millimeters. Um, so 10 millimeters make a centimeter. 
So 30 millimeters in length um, is right at an inch. It's, it's a little over an inch. Um, well, this thing is much bigger than an inch. So it's, it's very likely to be 13B right by that. Um, so rostrum lacks U-shaped indentation when viewed from above, more than two incisors per jar, large skull greater than 30 millimeters in length. So the rostrum is this part on the top, um, from the end of the nose to the, to the orbit. So right this section right there. And there's no U-shaped indentation, but what does one of those U-shaped indentations look like? That would be this. This is that U-shaped indentation, you see here? There's that U-shaped indentation. These are tiny, tiny little bat jaws, um, tiny little bat skulls. So, but what we have here is rostrum lacks the U-shaped indentation, and we're going to 18. 18, five incisors per jaw, 50 teeth, angular process on lower dart turned inwards, or three incisors per upper jaw, fewer than 50 teeth, angular process on lower jaw not turned inward. So um, the way um, the, the, the you look at the incisors is you look at it each half. So it counts not as both of them together. So this is gonna be three incisors per upper jaw, um, you'd count the teeth normally, um, but you're going to have to take my word for it since it's just a picture. Um, and uh, angular process on lower jar is not turned inward, so we're going to 19. And the other option would be this one, where you have five in, um, in the upper jaw. Uh, so we got we go to 19 19 jaw teeth variable canines protecting downwards and are oval or round in cross section go to 20. so these jaw teeth are variable um i'll show you in a second what brachydon looks like but they're protecting round they're they're projecting downs um they're, they're not going in all directions what that would look like is this guy uh, this guy here, he goes, his teeth go in all kinds of different direction. Um, so that's, that's not it. Um, and so we've got downward, go to 20. Um, less than or equal to 30 teeth, go to 21. More than 30 teeth, go to 23. So now we'd have to count all the teeth. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 on the top. And then on the bottom, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And then the same thing on the other side, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then you've got all these little teeth that are, you know, hard to come by. So I'm thinking this is actually more than 30 teeth. Let me see what, if that's true or not. Yeah, so this is more than 30 teeth, which compared to the other one. So more than 32 teeth go to 23. 40 or more teeth or 38 or less, uh, less total teeth. So we actually went for 40 or more here because when you count them all, all these little premolars and all these little things that are barely visible over there, uh, you end up with 40 or more, which would be hard for you to see here since we don't have the whole skull. Um, 40 teeth, zygomatic arch flaring when viewed from the front. Um, 42 teeth, zygomatic arch not flared, go to 25. So the difference between a flared and a not flared zygomatic arch is difficult to see. This would be a flared zygomatic arch. So this is an unflared zygomatic arch. So it's 42A, um, uh, 24A. 40 uh, teeth, zygomatic arch flaring when few from the, uh, not flared, it's, it's 42 teeth, zygomatic arch not flared, go to 25. 
Anterior end of the nasal bone is midway between the orbit and the incisors, or the anterior end of the nasal bone is closer to the incisor than the orbit. So again, you kind of have to know some turn. Um, so this is the anterior end of the nasal bone. Here's your orbit. And here is your, mid, uh, your, your incisors. And this is the other what it looks like. So this actually looks like it's more midway, right? Because here you've got this, this nose part is much closer to the front. So this is the one where it's closer to the incisor and this is the one where it's, um, where it's about midway. And so that is our solution and we are at it's a black bear. So that would be how you go about um, a key if you're like in a classroom when you're looking at handling that 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 thing in your handout um you have a um attached to this video there is a handout that has um several different um examples in it um that i want you to run through so there are, first of all, there's there are explanations um, about the dental formula. Um, and I guess I'll talk about that in just a second, a little bit. Um, and some, inter uh, some interesting information about uh, the difference between an herbivore and a carnivore. Herbivores have many more molars because they have to have grinding surfaces whereas carnivores tend to have canines because they need to rip flesh. And so it tells you a whole lot about what these animals are. Um, you can also tell a predator from a prey animal uh, by the location of the eye socket. So pay attention to that as you're, as you're looking through these, um, these different skulls. Um, and then what, you, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see um, a bunch of different skulls. Um, with pictures, all the pictures you need to do the identifications of them. And um, it gives you, for each of them, it gives you an approximate uh, size for the whole length of the skull. Notice that they're all in, in uh, centimeters. Um, they're all approximate numbers, uh, but it should allow you to identify all of these. And I believe there's 10 of them. And, and there's a list, and I'm gonna show you in just a second, the list, oh, it's, it's more than 10, it's 13. All right, but we're gonna run through one of them um, just on the, on, the, um, on the handout itself. So, so you've got this skull here, skull length is nine centimeters. So with the key A, um, so anytime you tell me um, what you're using, I want you to give me the key you used. Tell me the key you used to go along with it. Um, and as a matter of fact, so you're you're going to write this down. Uh, where's the chart? Well, not in here. Um, I'll find it. All right, let's go back to the... Hmm, okay, not here. So I'll, I'll well, at the very least, I'm gonna give you a, a quiz or something that where you can identify what these animals are. So that's how you're, um, you're gonna have a way to submit this. Actually, how did I do that last year? Hang on, give me a sec. Hang on, sweets.
Yeah, I think I'm going to give you a... Um, I'm going to give you a, 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 a key. I, I'm going to give you a quiz of some, some flavor. So, yeah, let's, let's walk through this. So I want to walk with you through the skull, um, at least one of them, just so you have an idea of what this looks like. Okay, so you have the skull here in your key, uh, in, your, in your handout. Um, skull length front to back is nine centimeters. So your first couplet says greatest skull length front to, front to back less than 90 millimeters, or is it more than? 90 uh, more than um, 20 millimeters well nine centimeters um, when you look at a ruler you can tell that nine centimeters has each centimeter has 10 of these little divisions inside of them so each each um, centimeter is 10 millimeters in length so nine centimeters would be 90 millimeters in length so our greatest skull length is greater than um, greater than um, 20 millimeters, so we're going to go to two. Um, now the next couplet is large brain case, smooth rounded muscles to give them almost flat appearance or none, none of the above, none, uh, not as the above. So that's the same question we had earlier, right? Um, and the large brain case, that was the human skull. Um, so this is not as the above, so we're going to go to three. At three, um, are there incisors present in the upper jaw or no incisors present in the upper jaw? Well, clearly there are incisors present in the upper jaw. So incisors present in the upper jaw, so we're going to four. Half the numbers of incisors in the upper jaw, half the number of incisors in the lower jaw. So there's one to one ratio or half the number of incisors in the upper jaw um, and Half the numbers of insert uh, in the lower jaw is more than one to one. So when you look at the incisors in the upper and the lower jaw, if you look over here, there's actually four teeth. So, and on the bottom there's two. So this is not a one to one ratio. So it's not a one to one ratio. Two tiny incisors present behind two larger incisors in the upper jaw. Oh, looky loo, that's exactly what it is over there. And this is one of the things as you're doing these keys, sometimes as you're doing them, the it, it should sound more and more right. It, you should have more and more experience of, oh yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking at. Um, like here, right? Where you're where you're suddenly you see this and you're like, ha, I got it. Um, if it sounds like worse and worse and worse all the time, um, then you've probably gone off the deep end somewhere on the top and, um, your better, uh, your best bet is probably to start over. Um, but in this little case, um, si since we have these two little incisors here, this is going to be, um, our bunny rabbit. Um, so that's our that's our rabbit. That was your our identification of this little skull here. Um, and so this is the same thing I want you to do um, for the rest of them. Now, when you're reporting these, um, I want you to report not just the identification, but also how you got there. So for this one, I'd want you to to write down using key A. I went one B, two B. 3B, 4B, 5A. And the identification is rabbit order lagomorpha. And that would be what you need to do for the skulls. And you need to do this for all 13 of these that you've got in this handout.